Well, from the not so subtle thumbnail and the video title, you might have guessed that I'm gonna play devil's advocate in this one. The most Sir Kristen Cole is an irredeemable villain, and by now I doubt he has many viewers of the show on his side. Indeed, the man has sunk to such low levels, especially in the series compared to the book, that it's difficult not to detest him unconditionally. However, he was not always a vindictive and hateful man. He also still possesses characteristics which can be deemed positive. Let's get down on Deity as I try to make a case in his defense. The son of a steward in service to Lord Dondarrion, Sir Criston Cole, a lowly knight of 23, finally got his chance when he entered the tourney held in the honor of King Viserys' accession. In the show, of course, it was the tourney which was supposed to honor King Viserys' not yet born son. Although the show depicted his victory against Daemon, it failed to credit Cole's prowess properly. According to Fire and Blood, Cole won the first event of the tourney which was the melee by disarming Daemon after he knocked the prince's sword from his hand. And no, there's no mention of him dishonorably attacking Daemon from behind after he was clearly beaten. In the next event, the joust, while wearing Rhaenyra's favor, Sir Criston Cole unhorsed Prince Daemon, then went on to unhorse the legendary twin brothers Sir Eric and Sir Eric Cargill of the Kingsguard. It's worth noting that he didn't win the joust. It's recorded that he was finally unhorsed by Lord Lyman Malister of the Riverlands. Sir Cole was supposedly so handsome that he had the older ladies of the court drooling over him. Not immune to his charms, Princess Rhaenyra became so enamored that she started calling him her white knight and begged his father the king to name him her personal ship. After which Sir Criston Cole was ever present on the princess's side and she was never seen without him. Things only get complicated for a young honorable knight who was handpicked by the realm's delight herself to join the illustrious brotherhood of the king's guard from now on. Now, before I move on to the next chapter in Criston Cole's life, I have to remind you that when it comes to the events of the Dance of the Dragons and House of the Dragon, we have two major historians we get events from. Mushroom, the court's fool, and Septon Eustace. The showrunners used both accounts, but the majority of the time went with the more spicy and kinky version of history which came from Mushroom. I personally would try to go with either as long as the acts described by a person are more in line with the character. When Daemon came back to court after his war in the Stepstones was done, he got close to Rhaenyra. According to Mushroom, once Daemon found out that Rhaenyra was in love with Sir Criston Cole, he started teaching her how to be more seductive and how to pleasure men. He started off by teaching her how to kiss. Then Daemon taught her how to touch a man, how to tease, how to strip, etc. Mushroom goes as far as suggesting that Daemon would get involved himself. Apparently they would fly on the dragons and spend days on desolate islands of Blackwater Bay. That's where Daemon apparently instructs her how to orally please men. However, this part is the least reliable part, since there was no way for Mushroom or anyone else to know what they did if the two were alone on those islands. Regardless, the last bit of Rhaenyra's lessons came in the form of observing men and women going at it in brothels, and that's the only part which the show touched on. Sir Criston Cole was an honorable knight who stayed true to his vows and took his responsibilities seriously. He came from humble beginnings and by becoming a knight of the king's guy he had achieved the height of his dreams. When Rhaenyra approached him armed with all the lessons in the art of seduction she had learned, Criston Cole would have none of it. He was actually said to be horrified at the idea and rebuffed Rhaenyra. House of the Dragon version of Sir Criston Cole, however, is not as strong as his book version. This knight of the king's guard betrayed his vows, his brotherhood and his own princes and king when faced with the first test of his duties. It is truly difficult to highlight how big of a betrayal this act was and here is when the man's downward spiral began. When we see him next, Sir Criston Cole is feeling guilty about betraying his vows so easily. He proposes to Rhaenyra that the two lovers run away to Essos to leave freely after it becomes clear that the princess had to marry. This is of course the account of history based on Septon Eustace's record. As I mentioned earlier, the book version of Sir Criston Cole never broke his vows and rebuffed Rhaenyra's first attempt to seduce him. When Rhaenyra was forced by Viserys to marry Leno, she went to Sir Criston Cole, who was now the Lord Commander of the King's Guard, I know, so different from the show Cole, and tried her luck again. Criston Cole, being the honorable knight that he was, 
resisted the temptation again. Rhaenyra, who had been twice scorned and knowing that her future husband would have no interest in her womanhood either, found the first person who would have her that night. That man turned out to be Sir Harwin Breakbones Strong, the oldest son of Sir Lionel Strong, the Hand of the King. This is the version of events according to Mushroom. Whether you believe it or not, it is interesting that the showrunners, who usually went with the Mushroom's version of events most of the time, decided to go against it this time. In my opinion, Kristen Cole refusing Rhaenyra is more in line with this character. Well, at least in the book. Now, back to the show. Going back to the House of the Dragon, Kristen Cole, I gotta say, there's something to be admired here in the end. Kristen Cole expresses his regrets and that tells us that now he understands the enormity of the betrayal he committed by surrendering to Rhaenyra's seduction. He also rejects the idea of becoming Rhaenyra's ho- as it would taint his legacy and the order of the Kingsguard Brotherhood forever. When Sir Kristen Cole is questioned by Alison later, he mans up and confesses to his sin. In my opinion, the exchange between Cole and Rhaenyra and then with Alison redeems Sir Kristen Cole to a great degree. To be fair, up until now, one could make a case for Cole to have been a victim of abuse of power and status by someone who dwarfed him in authority and title. I personally think a knight of the king's guard has to be better than that and be the kind of person the realm can depend on to stay true to his duties and vows. However, since I'm playing devil's advocate here, it can be argued that so far he hasn't done anything wrong. And on the contrary, he is the sympathetic and aggrieved party. Cole's next action, on the other hand, was not only utterly unforgivable and heinous, it was completely out of character for him and for a knight of the king's guard. Once Cole realizes that his betrayal is suspected, and I gotta emphasize something here, at this point there is no evidence pointing to Cole and Rhaenyra having slept together. Nobody other than the two, and of course Alison, knows of it. The handful who have heard of Rhaenyra's premarital exploits think Daemon was involved in it. And ladies and gentlemen, unfortunately that's what makes Kristen Cole a true villain. Not a smart one at that, I might add as he goes raving mad and beats another man to death without provocation or cause. Later when he tries to end his own life, in a manner strangely resembling Seppuku, the other soon to be villainess stops him. Here we are 10 years later and Sir Christian Cole is still somehow a knight of the king's guard, an ally of the queen consort. Despite his penchant for random murderous outbursts at parties, he's also trusted with the duties of master at arms and teaching the young princess sword fighting. Now it is obvious that he favors Viserys' sons to his grandsons. Yet I cannot fault him for pitting Jace against Aegon II. After all, they are both the eldest sons and when it comes to actual battle, there are no weight classes. We all saw that did not sit well with Harvin Strong and he beat the heck out of Sir Criston. Again, we might have enjoyed that scene but in Cole's defense, I should point out that when it came to combat, Cole was almost unrivaled in his time. According to the book, Sir Harwin Strong, who was notoriously a powerful warrior and was nicknamed Breakbones, fought against Sir Criston Cole in a tourney, but was beaten by Cole so badly that Mushroom the Coast Jester started calling him Broken Bones after that. In the latest episode, Cole was not heavily involved. There was one moment when his loyalties were tested as he was ordered by the Queen Consort to go against the wishes of his king and his ultimate commander. To his credit, he defied Alison's command, reminding her that he was only her protector and at the end of the day, his true liege was the king. Sir Criston Cole, whether we look at him in the vacuum of the House of the Dragon or Fire and Blood, at this point has little left to be admired or praised. Yet it would be unfair and simplistic to see him as just another villain to be blindly despised. Life at court is brutal and cutthroat, especially if you are the son of a nameless steward from faraway lands and have the curse or gift of being noticed by the heir to the throne. The moment Kristen Cole became the subject of Rhaenyra's obsession, he became a pawn in a game he was in no way trained or equipped for. The man's combat prowess was useless in the face of court politics and temptations of a Targaryen princess. He was doomed to either betray his vows and duties to the realm, king and his princess, or reject her and run afoul of the second most powerful figure in the realm. When it comes to what is defensible, that is as far as I can go. Mayhaps you have your own arguments. If you do, 
and then please post it in the comment section. I would love to hear your take. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. Tickle that like button and make sure you subscribe to my channel. See you in the next video.